All right, let's go through number two, six, and eight on the C2, and we're working on the applications of systems of equations, the last portion of this uh, unit one review of algebra one. So let's take a look at number two real quick. And if you've already done number two, then let's just make sure your answers are the same as what we got here. So number two, it says, an investor buys a total of 360 shares of two different stocks. The price of one stock is $35 per share, while the other stock is $45 per share. The investor spends a total of $15,000. How many of each share of each stock did the investor buy? So, the quicker we go through this, the quicker we'll get to six and eight. So, what? do we do to start? Again, the steps are right here on the side of the board. What do we do to start this? Figure out what you're looking for, exactly. What are my two unknowns? Let one equal x, let the other equal y. So, what's my x going to be in this case? What? Okay, well, what is it? We're looking, are we looking for price of the first stock or quantity of the first stock? Quantity, the number of $35 shares that we purchased, right? So number of $35 shares bought. Alright? Now, what about my Y? What's my Y? Number of $45 shares, right? Purchase. Number of $45 shares bought. Now, step two is what? Step two is what? Find your totals. What totals am I giving here? 360 total shares. That's a total number of shares. What's the other? Fifteen thousand, which is what? Total what? Dollar amount spent. Okay. Now, step three says take your totals, take one of your totals, and then find out what makes up that total. So how do we get 360 total shares? How many $35 shares do we buy? X amount, good. How many $45 shares do we buy? Y amount. And how many total shares do we buy? So it's what? Yes, X plus Y is equal to 360. Now, what about 15,000? How do we arrive at that total? What is it? $35 for every X. So it'll be 35X. Cost thirty-five dollars for every X that we purchase. And then what about my uh, Y? 45. Plus forty-five Y is equal to fifteen thousand dollars. Now, let's go with substitution. Okay, it doesn't really matter. You can do substitution or elimination. We've done the last few with elimination, so let's go on to substitution here. What do we have to do? What are we going to solve for? Pick one. <coughs> x or y, in which equation? The first one. As a coefficient of 1, so you might as well solve and make it easy on yourself. You're going to subtract x from each side, and we're going to get what? y is equal to 360 minus x. If you solve for x, it's going to be x is equal to 360 minus y. And then what do we do with this? Substitute that in place of my y in my other equation. So it becomes 35x plus 45 times 360 minus x is equal to 15,000. And we finish solving for x now. What is 45? And we've got to distribute to get rid of these parentheses. What is 45 times 360? 16,200. What is it? So we have plus 60,000, what? Um, 16,000. Oh, 16,000, okay. 
I, I saw for the other one. So 16,000 what? 200. 200. All right. And then distribute here, we get negative 45x is equal to 15,000. Now what do we have to do? Okay, subtract the 16,200 and then collect like terms, right? So if we collect these, what do we get? Negative 10x is equal to what? 1,200, right? 1,200. Negative 1,200. Okay? Now what do we do? Divide by negative 10, divide by negative 10. X is equal to what? 120. That means that we purchased what? 120. What? Yeah, we bought 120 shares of $35 stock. All right, now, how do we figure out the Y? We take this and do what with it? Put 120 in place of X. Yep. So we have what? 120 plus Y is equal to 1, or 360. And we simply just subtract 120, and what do we get? Y is equal to what? 240. 240. Okay, so then that also means we bought or purchased 240 shares of $45 stock. That is your answer, number two. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's what you got. Now, let's go on to number six. Six has got some decimals that can cause some problems, but uh, we can certainly get rid of those decimals. So let's take a look at number six now. Any questions on what we just went through with this problem? Let's go through six and then eight. And then if there's anything else, I'll go through that individually with you. If after going through these, you're done, we'll start on C-3 be the last one of those that you do, and then we're going to take our practice test, or work on the practice test, <coughs> and then obviously test on Wednesday. All right, so number six. Harold has, summer, uh, has a summer lemonade stand where he sold uh, small cups of lemonade for about twenty-five, large cups for two fifty. Harold sold a total of 155 cups of lemonade and collected a total of $265. How many cups of each type did he sell? Alright, so again, we must establish our two unknowns for number six right off the bat. X is going to be equal to something, Y is going to be equal to some unknown. What is X going to be? What's X going to be? Without B. Huh? No, no, I'm on the road. That's okay. What? What? What will X be? What about small cups? Do we need to know the number of small cups sold or the price? Yeah, we need to know the number. So we have to write that down. We've got to establish that from the very beginning. Number of small cups. Sold. Y is going to equal what? Number of what? Large cups. Sold. Okay, step two now. You create or you get your totals. What totals am I given here? 155. And what is that a total of? What is it? Number of uh, total cups sold. And then what else? What's our other total? Exactly. And that is what? Mm, no, not number of cups. 
The total what? Money. Money brought in, right? Sold. The total amount of money sold. What's that? That's what it said after. What's it? Sorry. So, 155, that's the total number of cups sold, right? How many small cups were sold? How many small cups were sold? X amount, right? How many large cups were sold? Y amount, how many total cups were sold? 155, which means my equation is X plus Y is equal to 155. Now, price, 265, the total amount of money that was collected. How much money did I collect from small cups sold? You gotta ask yourself that. How much does each small cup cost? One twenty-five for each small cup. How much does each large cup cost? Two fifty, right? So if each X costs one twenty-five and each Y costs two fifty, and I bring in two sixty-five, two hundred and sixty-five dollars, what's my equation gonna be here? So I have to have money involved, right? I have a value, money at the end here, which is my total which means money must be involved in my equation. And X is only a no quantity, number of cups. And Y is only a number of cups. So I have to bring in these values, these uh, costs here. So what's my equation? Well, $1.25 X plus 250 Y, $2.50 Y, is equal to six or two sixty-five. These are my two equations. And now from here, I need to solve this. Now again, we could deal with the decimals. Good like. If we want to get rid of the decimals to make this a little easier, what would I do to this equation? There's a couple things I can do. What would I do? You could multiply by a hundred for sure. What are we dealing with? halves and quarters, right? <coughs> so another way to get rid of this, which would be a smaller number, would be to multiply by 4. On your calculator, what is one, $1.25 times 4? 25 cents. $1.25. 5, right? Will that get rid of the decimal here? What if I multiply 250 by Four. What do I get? Ten. So I could multiply by a hundred. Yes, it would give me much larger numbers, right? But it would get rid of decimals. Or take a look at the decimal that's hardest to get away in this case. And since we're dealing with a fourth, right? 0.25 is a fourth. If you multiply by four, you will undo that fraction, that decimal. So multiply everything in the bottom equation by four. We keep the top equation the exact same, multiply the bottom equation, and we get what? 5x plus, what did you say? 10y, correct? Is equal to, what's 265 times 4? 1,060. Okay, now that's a little bit easier to work with here. Now let's do elimination this time. What will be easiest to eliminate? Well, again, we're eliminating one whole set of variables, so we're looking at both the coefficients. <clears throat> These coefficients here are 1 and 1. Will the x's be easiest to eliminate, or the y's? X's, because their LCM is what? 5 instead of 10. So multiply the whole top equation by 5. So we end up getting 5x plus 5y is equal to, what's 155 times 5? Calculator was 155 times 5. 775. 775. Okay. And then we keep the bottom equation the same because I already have a 5 in front of my x. And do we add or subtract these two equations together? Subtract. 5x minus 5x eliminates. 5y minus 10y becomes negative 
negative 5y, and 75 minus one, uh, 1060 is, or 775 minus 1060 is negative 285. Now divide by negative 5, and y is equal to what in this particular case for number 6? Fifty-seven. Right. So that means that fifty-seven, right here, fifty-seven uh, large cups were sold. Now, what about my x? Well, we can simply take this, plug it back into my y right here to find my x. So I get x plus 57 is equal to 155. Subtract 57. x is equal to what? 98. Correct. So 98 small cups were sold. 57 large. 98 small, totals out to 155 overall sold, and it also will get you $265 at those costs. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, last one, number eight. If there's anything beyond that, I'll go over that individually with you. After this, we should be able to move on to C-3, the last one. So let's take a look at number 8. This is the stamp one. All right, Galena ends up spending $3.60 on stamps. She purchases two different types of stamps, 20 cent stamps and 30 cent stamps. The number of 20 cent stamps is two less than the number of 30 cent stamps that she purchased. Question comes into play is, how many of each kind did she purchase? So what do we need to do here? Number eight. A handful of you had questions on eight. So x is going to be equal to what? y is going to be equal to what? OK. The quantity or number of 30 cent stamps what will y be? The number of 20 cent stamps bought. Okay. Now, do we have any totals here? Do we have any totals in number 8? <clears throat> What, $3.60, correct. So $3.60. Are there any other totals in here? The only other information given in this particular one is that it, says, it says that the number of 20 cent stamps is two less than the number of 30 cent stamps. That doesn't give us a total. That helps us arrive at a second equation. But let's first find the totals. So 360 is the only total we have. Now, how much does each 30 cent stamp cost? And how do we write that in the proper notation? Remember, this is in dollars and cents, right? So how would we write 30 cents? What, what is it? 0 0.30 or 0 0.3, right? How would we write 20 cents? Those are the values of each of those, or the cost of each of those stamps. Now, she spent $3.60. Each X cost 0 0.30 cents, or 0 0.30 dollars, or in other words, 30 cents, because remember, a dollar 30 cents is a fraction of a dollar, so that's why we have to keep them as decimals. So what's my equation going to be here? 0.30x plus 0.20y is equal to $3.60. Does 
Now, the second equation is a little bit more difficult to create, but you've got to read that sentence. That sentence says that the number of 20 cent stamps, what is the number of 20 cent stamps we sold or we bought? Y, right? Number of 20 cent stamps, which is Y, is 2 less than, less than means what operation in math? Subtraction. 2 less than the number of 30 cent stamps, which is what? X. So that means Y is 2 less than X. Okay, we're converting the English language into mathematical language. So how do I write Y is equal? Well, I just said right. How do we write y is 2 less than x? Y equals x minus 2. Exactly. Y is means equals. 2 less than means subtraction of 2 from the number of 30 cent stamps, which is x. And again, we could read it to ourselves to confirm this and make sure it's correct. The number of 20 cent stamps is 2 less than the number of 30 cent stamps. Is that what it says on this sheet? Exactly what it says on this sheet. So that means these are my two equations. Now again, I have decimals, so you can deal with the decimals or you can get rid of them. I personally will just get rid of them. Now, what can I do to this to make this, these decimals disappear? I can't just simply multiply by four this time, like I did before, because I don't have fourths. Okay. I have different fractions here. So what can I multiply by here? 100 would make it two decimal places, make it 30, right? Multiply by 100, make it 20. Multiply 100, make it 360. Is there something less I can multiply by? What if I only want to move my decimal place one place? That would give me three, right? What if I move it one place here? That gives me what? Two, and that gives me what here? Does that work? What am I, when I move the decimal place one place to the right, what am I multiplying by? By what? 10. So just multiply the whole top equation by 10. And you get rid of any decimals. It becomes 3x plus 2y is equal to 36. And then I have y is equal to x minus 2. Those, this is the modified version of my system here. And that's a little bit easier to work with. Now, what are we all primed and ready for now? Substitution. We know that y is equivalent to x minus 2. Wherever there is a y, I plug the x minus 2 in place of it. It becomes 3x plus 2 times x minus 2, which is equal to 36. Now what? Distribute. Solve for x, right? We get 3x plus 2x minus 4 is equal to 36. Collect like terms here and get 5x minus 4 is equal to 36, and then solve. 5x is equal to 40, and then divide by 5. x is equal to what? 8. 8. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, 8. 30 cent stamps or bought. And then how do we figure out what Y is? I'll simply just plug it back into the easiest of the two equations. Y is equal to 8 minus 2, so Y is equal to what? 6. six. So that means 6 20 cent stamps or bought or purchased. That is your final answer. Any questions on that? Again, creating the equations is a tough part. If we can fully understand what is going on with the creating of equations, then everything else kind of falls into place after that. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Then I would like you to turn in that C-2. And I'm going to come out and hand you C3, and then I want you working on C3 right now. All right, we should be able to get C3, half of it done probably in class today, finish it up for homework, and then we'll start into our